Hey guys, it's going to right again and welcome back to my channel. So in the previous videos, I show you how to create a TCP server and we use that net core for that. I also show you how to create a console application where we could actually add as the TCP client and communicate back to the server. So in this video, I'm going to finally go into Unity and create a client in Unity that can communicate to our server. And then in addition to that, we're going to have to communicate with the main thread in Unity. And to do that, I'm going to be implementing a dispatcher. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing, which is actually creating a project in Unity that can talk to our TCP server. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to rename a couple of things because I told you on the previous video, I wasn't really happy with the naming that I used initially. So let's look at that first. And then once I'm done with that, we can go ahead and start with the new project. So what I'm going to do is I don't want this to be called Unity TCP because it's really not a Unity project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to TCP client. Just keep it basic. And I'm also going to rename the server. And then we're going to make sure that everything is, you know, everything is correct. And then what I'll do is here is I'll have to also rename the, the project itself. And I'm also going to do the same thing on the TCP client. And one of the beauties about using VS Code is I have full control of everything. So, which is great because I can, I can know, I know exactly what things need to change. So I know these two are going to be regenerated, but I know that the namespace is not. So I'm going to be doing the rename here. And this is going to be, it looks like that didn't work. I'll just rename it manually. There's no, there's not much going on in the client. So I think this is fine if I do it that way. And let me just make sure that this is all fine. There's really not assembly because I'm using that net core. And the this I believe gets regenerated automatically, so it should be okay. And in fact, I could probably just remove, I'm sure I can just remove the bin and also the object and they're gonna be recreated. So and we'll just have it, you know, be basic like that. And then what I'll do here, it'll I'll make sure that this is also good, this is good then this namespace is going to have to be renamed. And then in my program, I'm going to have to rename it as well. Okay, so we should have everything we need. I'm going to drop the bin. I'm going to do move to trash. I'm also do the same thing on the object, move to trash. And then what I'll do, I'll go back to my terminal, kill the server, kill the client, and then do a .NET build. And I'll just do the same thing here, .NET and then we'll look at the bean results just to make sure everything it still is named correctly. Okay, so yeah, I think everything, yep, we have our new DLs with the new names and everything is named correctly. So the other thing that I wanna do is, if you notice, this is called Unity TCP. And what I can do is, let's go ahead and close out of this. I'm gonna close out of everything and then go into my finder and just know that I'm going to be checking this in. So names are for me important because I need to make sure that they make sense to you as well. We can just call this one TCP server and client. So that's what this is. Awesome. And TCP server and client. And I think I'm, I think I'm good with that. So that's going to include the Unity client and also the TCP client, which is bare bones, a console application. Okay, so I think I think I'm happy with I'm happy with those names. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and go into I'm gonna go into Unity here, the Unity Hub, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna create a new project. So this is gonna ask me where I want to put it. So if you notice, I had the other ones under let's just do PWD. I had the other ones under this directory, so I'm just gonna copy. I'm gonna copy that directory and Unity TCP. And looks like this is pointing to, let me see, let me just make sure. Okay, yeah, it was pointing to the wrong, let's see, TCP server client. This is where I wanna put it. So I'm just gonna, it was pointing to the wrong directory. Okay, so what I wanna do is, let me see, I wanna go back. Oh, this is the server and the client. Okay, so. I want to go here. And so this is going to be the location of the new project. I'm hoping that Unity creates a new folder. I can't remember if they do or not. But if they don't, we, we can move them. We can move it to its own folder. 
So it's going to say Unity TCP client. This is what this is going to be. And it's going to be a 3D application. I think that's fine. I'm going to hit Create. And we can go ahead and look at the files that it's creating. And this is perfect because it did create a folder. And that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm just going to open up code, see what Unity is doing. And so this is perfect. So I have my TCP client, my TCP server, which is the one that we're going to be communicating for from this client and also this client. So, so we're going to have a Unity client and also a TCP client. So now that I'm thinking about it, and you're going to hate me because I'm going to rename this one more time, I'm going to say that this is going to be the console TCP client. And a lot of times, this is how it is, right? Like you you look at something, and, and, that, and then it makes sense. So now that I'm looking at the names together, this is going to be the console TCP client. This is just going to be a TCP server. And then this is going to be the Unity TCP client. All right. And then now that I renamed that, let's go ahead and rename it all over again. And I promise you that that's going to be the last rename that I do. Console TCP client. And let me make sure that I rename the namespace. Not that it matters because this is the only place where it's getting used. And then what I'll do, I'll just remove the bean directory, which I'm, I don't think it's necessary, but I like to I like to keep it clean. And then we can go back into our console TCP client and do a .NET build. Make sure that everything is clean and regenerate it, and it has the new names. So that's what I love about that .NET Core. It's, just, it's really lightweight, and I can use VS Code as well. It's really fast. All right, so we have this going. We have this is perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into Unity. And we, we're starting with a brand new scene. I'm going to call this scene the TCP client. Client example. Let's go ahead and name it that. And then I'm just going to do file, build settings. It's just common practice and add this as an open scene. Perfect. OK, so I'm going to need I'm going to need two objects in here. And one of the objects that I'm going to need, it's going to be the actual dispatcher. And then I'm also going to need the actual TCP client. And I'll show you what the dispatcher is going to be. So it's going to be a TCP client. And we haven't created any of these just yet. Then what I'll do is I'll go into Assets. And then we'll create a new folder. It's called Scripts. And then in the Scripts folder, I'm going to have two different classes. We can just mock it up right now. So this one is going to be the TCP client. And it's going to be exactly and very similar to what we already created, which is going to do just a little bit of refactoring, but that's that's all. And then this one is going to be brand new. And this is going to be the one responsible for dispatching actions to the main thread. Dispatcher. Awesome. And then I think everything, I think all of that looks good. And then what I'm going to do is I have a script already to create a singleton. I want to use that, so let me let me go ahead and pull that, and let me go into my client here, and let me put myself in the Unity TCP client assets assets, and then we'll just go into scripts the scripts, and okay, so this is where we're gonna be putting. I'm gonna need a core folder, and then inside of core, this is normally what I do for my projects. This is going to be the singleton. Awesome. And then I know that if I go back to, let's see, so it's going to take me back. I'm sure it's going to be many directories. Let me, let's not be fancy. Let me just pull it from the finder. And then I'll just do it this way. Let's go to my code folder and I'll go into my Unity and then we'll go into draw AR which is the new game that I'm working on, or experience, I think it's better to call it. And OK, so, so I'll go into my Unity client, assets, scripts, core, singleton, and then we'll just pa paste it in there. OK, so I think we're good to go as far as like some of the initial setup that I need to do. And then what I need to do as well is I'm going to go into, let's go ahead and let's do it from here. Because I know that Unity has issues if I open the editor before. So I'm just going to do open C-sharp project so it regenerates everything. All right, so this one, we're just going to have the Unity TCP client open. Perfect. And then I'll go to Assets, 
and then we'll go into our TCP client. And then let me just open another terminal for everything else. Let me go back. There we go. Let's just go open up another VS Code version because I want to look at the client as well. So, so one of the things that I that I want to start with is bringing in the TCP client that we already created. So I'm going to go into my my program, and a lot of these we're gonna need. So I'm basically just gonna copy this entire method. We could have made that a class library, and that works as well. But I think for now, we can just copy it. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be that much code. And then the next thing that I'll do, I'll leave the update method there just in case we need it for some other reason. But we can remove this. I'm also gonna need the method that I just copy. And then in here we can leave and leave everything else the same. I'm just gonna be bringing in the the namespaces that I'm, I'm missing. So I'm missing console, which it's not gonna work in this case, but that's okay. It's it's not just not gonna show. Okay, because we're gonna show it back in the main thread. So 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 far so good. The other thing that we're gonna need we're, so, we're also gonna need these threads. So just to keep it simple, let's just do one thread right now. And we're going to do that thread right in the start method. And then it's going to do, let's just do that. And then we don't need the update actually. I think, I think this is fine. So, but right now there's really no way for me to see messages. I can't really see what's happening. And, and that's one of the main issues with, with Unity. And it's not really an issue. It's just basically how Unity handles things. You, you can't really, uh, Unity is not thread safe. So you can't really write uh, write threads and then use those threads to write to the main UI thread. You have to use something called the dispatcher, which is basically a queue that has a lock. And the way that it works is we we're constantly looking at the queue, and whenever we have messages in the queue, we basically dispatch them. So, but we don't do that. We don't really write to the thread. We we use the dispatcher to to tell the thread that the main thread that there is a message and then that message gets sent gets sent as soon as the dispatcher as soon as the thread has time to basically what what's called DQ DQ some of those messages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can do we can use a dispatcher to use a queue and then grab those messages out of the queue and put them basically on the main thread so the main thread can actually show those messages. So hopefully that makes sense, but I'm gonna show you the code so that it can make, it will make more sense as you look at the code. So right now this should work, I should be able to connect, but I'm not gonna be able to see any messages. But I wanna show you that this works just without creating the dispatcher. So the other thing that I wanna do that I haven't done yet is let's go ahead and not hard code these values. Let's add a private and then in here I'll just say string. This is gonna be the server IP address and then we'll just serialize it a serializable field and then I'll just do I'll just do a default value which is going to be this one I think that's fine but if we want to override it we can and I know that we're going to have to change this anyways so it's good that I added I add them as variables and this is going to be the port and then the port we can just, we can just set it to 13,000 by default and then what I'll do here I'll just replace this to do that and we can go ahead and add a new port at the port variable and then we can just hard code this one for now i think that's fine we can add another client as well let's just do client 2 excellent and i think that's all we need here as far as that is concerned and it looks like i don't need these two using so let's just remove those okay so i think i think we're good as far as that so let's go ahead and we need to add the script to the tcp client game object so I'm just gonna do TCP client, add it, and you can see that we have our default values there. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna bring in the server. We don't need this anymore, we don't need this anymore because we're gonna be basically using Unity as our client now. Okay, and then I'll just go ahead and run our server. And if this works, it should be seeing two different client connections. I'm gonna hit play. And then you can see the client one is connecting, client two is connecting, and then I'm now broadcasting the multiple messages, which is three messages per client. So that's what you see: two, 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 and then one, one, one. So I know I know that this port is working fine. 
The the other thing that we need to do is, yeah, that's working fine, but I can't really see anything in here. I it would be cool if I could see those messages in a canvas. So for now, let's let's see if we can get him to show in the debug.log and then we can add it to the canvas just so that to prove to you that we can write to the main thread. So this implementation it's going to start with the dispatcher. So right now we're basically console the right line. So I'm going to be changing this to use what's called a dispatcher. And I've been reading a lot and I look at a lot of different examples. I'm not gonna take the whole credit because there's a lot of examples on the web that do this. So one thing for sure that we're gonna need is we're gonna need my singleton implementation. So I'm gonna say singleton and then that's gonna be bringing in a new using statement. And then I'm gonna say dispatcher. Awesome, so that should give us a singleton of dispatcher. And then in here, we're not gonna need anything other than the update. So I'm just gonna leave the update method, but this is gonna be the method that is sending the messages, basically taking it out of the queue and invoking the actions. Okay, so we need to start with a queue. So I'm just gonna do private static read only, and this is gonna be our new queue. And then it's gonna be a queue of actions. Awesome, and then let me make sure that this is working. So I need to say, okay, so what are gonna be the actions that, are, that the queue is gonna be executing? So we can just say, call. we can just call this one actions. I think that's fine. And then queue, and then it's gonna be a queue of actions. So, so far, all this is is just a queue that has different actions. So you put something on the queue and then when it, says, you know, when, when it comes to getting it out of the queue, it's going to have an action that is part of the queue and then we can execute that action. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is I need to be able to put things in the queue and also make sure that I can get things out of the queue. So we're gonna need a new method to, to do what's called in queue. Uh, that net calls it in queue. I don't know if I'm pronunciating that correctly, but it's basically spelled this way. And that's basically means that we're basically putting something in the queue. So the things that I'm gonna be putting in the queue are gonna be a enumerator. So I'm just gonna say a enumerator and it's gonna be our action. And then just like I did on the previous video, whenever you're, you're using multi-threaded applications, you wanna make sure that you do a lock. And then in this one, I'm just gonna do an action which is gonna be your actions. So we're gonna to try to gracefully talk to this queue in a multi-threaded application. So we need to make sure that we're, we're using logs so that we don't have issues with you know, multiple threads trying to read from that queue. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm just gonna say actions and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a new action to the queue. And we can, do, we can do basically a delegate or we can just do a Lambda to create a new action. And this is gonna be we're gonna have semicolon here. And then I'm gonna use a start core routine to add an action to the queue. And that's what I'm doing in a enumer enumerator. Awesome. So so all we're doing in here, we're saying, okay, if if the thread that is trying to, you know, that is trying to add a message, which is gonna be a message in our case, to the queue, it's trying to write to the actions. We wanna make sure that it's locked so that we don't have issues with threading. And then we're gonna add one of those messages, which is gonna be a method to the action queue. And then we're gonna, when, whenever we get that queue out of the way, when, whenever we get the item out of the queue, we're gonna execute a, a core routine. So at this point, this is just gonna be, is a delegate. So it's just a pointer to this, to this method that has this action. So this doesn't get executed until you actually invoke that action. So, so far we're good. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that I'm, I'm getting those messages out of the queue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a lock again. I'm gonna do lock on actions. And this is gonna be a while loop. And we're gonna keep checking, okay, do we have any, do we, do we have any actions in the queue? Do we have any actions on the queue? So I'm just gonna say count is greater than zero. And then if we have messages in the queue that we need to, or actions in the queue that we need to process, we're gonna say, okay, yeah, we do have an action in the queue that we need to process. If we don't, this while loop is gonna die, but as soon as we get an action, we need to dequeue it so that we can get it out of the queue and we need to invoke it, which is going to invoke that action. All right, so that's everything that we need to do on the dispatcher so far. So hopefully this is, this is simple enough so that you know what's happening. We're adding things to the queue by using the end queue and we're basically 
taking, taking things out of the queue by using the DQ method and then the invoke to invoke those actions. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to implement some of that new functionality in the TCP client. So one of the things that you notice is if I, if I do, and this is a mistake that I made in the past, if I were to do something like this here, which we're gonna need, but you can't do it just yet. If I do dispatcher that instance, and then I were to I were to basically enqueue something new, so which means that I can add a new action. So let's say that we do we do something like this, right? And I say debug dot log, and then I just say I just basically say what we're sending here. It's gonna copy that and then paste it. And we can just, let me make sure that I have all the parentheses that I need. And I think I do, but I think I'm missing the curly braces and another curly brace here, maybe. Oh, this is gonna be an actual enumerator. So let me, let me do it this way, enumerator. And let me make sure that I bring in, so this is gonna be show message or send message. We can just call it receive message. And then we can pass in the message here. I'll just do a string message. Okay, and we don't need the whole thing. I think I typed something and it's trying to be helpful. Yeah, perfect. And then I need my curly brace. And then what I'll do here, I'll just say yell return no. Awesome. And then at the end, I'll just say debug the log and then we'll just display your message so i think everything here looks fine and let me make sure that i bring in the using statement okay receive message and then what i'll do here is if you notice this is going to take an action so i could simply just say message hopefully this is going to work and perfect or the other way that i could do that is doing it that way. I don't think it like it likes when I'm when I'm passing in an argument that way. Let me see if I can see what the error is. Cannot convert a lambda expression to the enumerator. And I think I think what's happening is yeah so this is this is actually taking a, an enumerator. Let me let's try this in a different way and see if we can get it to work. So I'm gonna go back into my dispatcher and then what I'm gonna do is I do want to take in an action that is not an enumerator, but we can probably just wrap it around. And I found this by looking at another person's GitHub and I will put that person's uh, credits in the GitHub so that you know who created it. I just don't remember what, what the GitHub URL is, but I will put it in the description. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take in an action and I'm gonna actually wrap an action by doing an enumerator. And then this is gonna be the action wrapper. This is gonna take an action, action. And then we're going to execute the action. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna execute the action. And then just like what we do with enumerators, we yell, we yell return, no. So what this is gonna be allow us to do is we can do something like this. We can say in queue, action wrapper, which is gonna be this. So it's gonna allow us to convert this action to an enumerator so that we can just pass in an action and then we can just do action. And we can probably just refactor this and do something like this just to make it fun. Awesome, and I think, yep, I think that works. So now what I can do here is I can go back in here and I should be able to do, uh, instead of doing it this way, I should be able to just do this. If that works, yep, because it is taking an action now. I could do it that way or I could go back in here and say, you know what, I want to, I want to just do that. And then we can say debug, debug that log message. And the other thing that I could do that I think will be cool is we can show the client ID that is sending that message. So what I'm gonna do here is we can just do our client ID, and then this is gonna be the client ID that we're passing in. 
and make sure that I do lowercase there. Client ID connected. And we can just say client ID there. And then in another line, I'm just gonna say client ID. Oh, we can just say message. And then we can just pass in the message. Awesome. Now what I can do is I can go back in here and I can just say, okay, you know what? The client ID that I want to pass, which we have, I believe we have, if, so it looks like we don't, well, it, we we do, by, but we're not passing it into the connect, to the connect client. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and pass it in. So I'm just gonna say in client ID. And then what I'll do here, I'll just say in client ID. We can just start one and then I'll just say, you know what, this is going to be the client ID that is sending the message, this is going to be the new parameter, and this is going to be the other new parameter. And of course we need to increment the client ID here. We can just say first client ID and we can just say second client ID. And the cool thing about this is I can now I can now pass it in here to the receive message, which is then going to call the dispatcher. The dispatcher is going to call the the dispatcher is going to call the an action, and then that action is going to be basically sent to the update method that is going to get captured by the main thread. Okay, so let me see what I have run here. So I have the client ID that I'm passing in, which it is an integer, so we can just change that to an integer, and this is going to be our message. Okay, so everything works fine except object reference is required to oh, okay let's go ahead and not make this non-static so that i can yeah so that i can access that other method okay so i think this is good and the i'm not sure if i want to if i want to call this receive message and i think that i think that's fine i think we can call it we can just say process message or we can just say message. Let's go ahead and just call it message. So that I can, because I'm gonna, some of them are gonna be send messages, some of them are gonna be receive messages. So in this case, the message is going to be client sending blah, 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 blah. And in here, what I'm saying is, so let me see, let me see what I wanna do. So instead of doing that, instead of just sending that plane, I'm gonna do it like that. And then we can, instead of just saying message, I'll just say message, just like that. Yeah, I think I like that. So I can replace like, whatever right line is doing, we're going to we're gonna send to Unity. And then I can do the same thing here. This is just going to be that. And we can do that. And I can remove the right lines because it's really never going to show. So I don't need those. And then if we have any exception whatsoever, I also want to send that information through. And yep, and then I'm going to make sure that I have, I don't know that I want to send the whole thing, but I want to send an error. So I'm just going to say, let's just call exception. And then this is going to be just, we can just do exception that message, eat that message. I think it works fine. We can send that back to the, to the main thread. Okay, so I think everything I think everything looks good. Pretty happy with how these turn out. And I think everything that I wanted to do works fine. Okay, so now it looks like I'm not using system that collections that remove that. Now let's go ahead and go back into Unity and attach or dispatcher. So we're gonna have an issue and I and I wanna show you what that issue is. So right now the singleton doesn't get created until I call it. If I look at my singleton implementation, this is only getting created when this property gets called. So that's going to be an issue for creating that when the, when the, let me go back to the TCP client, when this is happening on a different thread. So we don't want to create a single tongue in a different thread. We want to create it on the main thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it on the awake. I'm going to create my single tongue and that single tongue is just going to be created by doing something like, basically just doing that right here on the dispatcher is going to force to create it. And we can just say dispatcher, dispatcher equal the dispatcher. This is so that it creates a singleton at this point. 
create singleton object before threads are created. Awesome. So I think that works. And then, so everything should work if I coded it correctly. If not, we'll, we'll figure it out, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I'm gonna start my TCP server. And then the other thing that I need to do here is I need to add my dispatcher. Okay, so I have my TCP client and let's go ahead and hit play and see if this works. And it looks like it's working because we're waiting, see we're waiting for client connections, waiting for client connections and then we're broadcasting multiple messages and we're getting messages on the console which means that Unity is getting those messages as well. So the last thing that I want to do before we wrap it up is I want to also show you that this is writing, this can be written to the canvas. So let's go ahead and add a new canvas. And I'm going to go here into D mode. And we know that this is working, so I can just make this window bigger. Okay, so I'm going to just focus on the canvas just for a few minutes. And, and then what I'll do is I'll add, let me add some background so that we can see what we're dealing with. And this can be a raw image. And we'll just make a raw image that is black. I like black and white. So, and then we'll just make it big. Awesome. And then I wish there was like a resize, you know, but there isn't, so that's fine. Unless there is one and I don't know about it, but if you guys know, let me know in the comments. But that's normally what I do for, for this type of thing. So this one is gonna be console. And then in, we don't need to put it inside, but we can create a couple of text boxes. The, I like how Text Mesh Pro text boxes look. So let me go ahead and do that. It's, it's just so much cleaner than the regular fonts on Unity. So let me go ahead and bring it. And okay, so that looks good. And then we have our new text. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, let's go ahead and basically put it right on the top left. And we can just do position zero, zero, and then we can just resize it. Okay, so let's go ahead and, okay. And this one is just gonna be for, this is gonna be a title, that's all I wanna do on this one. I want to say this is gonna be the TCP, TCP Unity Client Console. Something like that I think, I think works. And now we can just change the size. Something like that, awesome. And then this is going to be the title. Now we can just duplicate it. And this is going to be the output. And then in this one, I'm just going to do something different. And I'm just going to make it much bigger and obviously a lot smaller. We can do something like that works. And so if we're typing things in, I think that works. OK, so we can. We can start with something like that. We can just say this is the console output. I normally put placeholders and things like this so that I know that they look okay. And then I think everything else in, in here should be just fine. We have wrapping enable and then vertical mapping, overflow. Yeah, I think we're good. I don't think we need to go very fancy. And then the last thing that I'll do is we'll add a new private Let's do a private. Let me go back into, I can never remember what Text Mesh Pro calls this class. So I normally just go to the components and let me go ahead and do this one more time. So if you click on this gear and then you click on edit script, you can always find out what the, basically what the class that we need to bind to it's called. So in this case, this is gonna be the Text Mesh Pro UGUI. Okay, let me go into my TCP client, and then this is that's what's gonna be that label. And this one is gonna be the output text. And then we're also going to make it serializable so that we can attach it. Awesome. And then we're gonna have to bring the DM Pro for Text Mesh Pro. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna still leave this. I think that's helpful, but I'm also going to be adding to this text box. And what I'm gonna be adding is, I'm gonna be adding a couple of things. I'm gonna be adding the, so let me go ahead and change this. So I'm going to be adding a string, which is going to be the client connected. 
So we can do, that's going to be the client that is getting connected. We can do another string for the message. And I know that's going to be message, so we don't really need to. But what I want to do is we can just do message. And I don't know if Text Mesh Pro handles this, but I'm going to add a, basically a carriage return. And this is going to be client message. And then what I'll do here, I'll just do an append so that we can do something like this. We can say, you know what, I want to append the client client connected, which is gonna be which is gonna be that value followed by a carriage return. We can we can just basically do that and then client message and then carriage return, carriage return. So we're gonna have we should have a, basically a, a new line after client connected and then client message and then basically a new line and another new line for spacing. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll find out if it's going to work. Okay, so now the last thing that I need to do is bind our new text box to the canvas, to the, sorry, to the TCP client. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it here. And if everything works, we should be able to see those messages popping up. So let me make sure that my server is running. I'm going to kill it and start it just to start clean. And, and then what I'll do, I'll just resize this so we can see the server and there we go I just wanted to make sure that I started and then right here I'm going to let's see if I can go into game mode there we go that's better and we can probably just move the inspector down just for just for this instance uh, let me just I want to put it right there so we can see the consoles and also the messages here popping up as long as I work I haven't really tested this so this will be the first test, so I'm just going to hit play. And yeah, we can see messages on the canvas. We can see client 2 sending a message. We receive a message from client 2. Client 2 sending another message. And then, and then, and so on. And obviously it looks like the canvas is not, is not sizing appropriately. And, but that's fine. I think that's, that's just a different issue. So I think everything is working fine, guys. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned. I know this was uh, a very long video. I thought it was going to be shorter, but hopefully you can pause and you can continue. And just so you know, I'm going to be putting this repository, everything in GitHub as soon as I'm done with the videos and as soon as they are uploaded. And if you don't mind supporting me in Patreon, that will be awesome because it's going to help me in creating a lot more videos like this and, and also other things that you guys might, might be looking for. So thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources and tutorials. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.